In this video, we will review EEG in normal sleep. Specifically, we will look at different stages of normal sleep and look at the components of each of these stages, including drowsiness, stage 1 sleep, stage 2 sleep, slow wave sleep, and REM sleep. In order to understand the progression into different stages of sleep, it is useful to first start with normal wakefulness. This is a patient with a normal background EEG during wakefulness. There are several clues that this patient is awake, which we have reviewed in prior videos. You can see prominent myogenic artifact in the frontal and temporal regions on both sides. This is likely related to summated compound muscle action potentials from the frontalis and temporalis muscles, which have some ongoing tone during wakefulness. In addition, best seen in the posterior aspects of the midline electrodes, there is a normal posterior dominant rhythm, or alpha rhythm. In this case, the alpha rhythm is 11 hertz, which is well within the normal range. Thirdly, we can see some eye movements, including an eye blink here, and a quick horizontal eye movement here at the end of the page. All of this suggests normal wakefulness, likely with eyes closed, at least initially. As we scroll forward, we can see some eye opening with prominent eye movements, more muscle artifact, and a blocking of the posterior dominant rhythm. As we move forward, we see some eye closure, and the posterior dominant rhythm becomes more augmented and easier to see. Then, over the next 10 or 15 seconds, we start to see a few changes. First, we see decreased myogenic or muscle artifact, which might suggest that this patient is relaxing, and possibly going into a decreased state of arousal. This is one of the earliest indications that drowsiness might be starting. The second very prominent thing that we can see on this recording are prominent very slow undulations within the temporal change bilaterally. If you look carefully at any particular second, you can see that there is a large electropositivity at F7, and at the same time, there is a large electronegativity at F8. We have reviewed eye movements in a previous video, but this would suggest that the positively charged cornea is causing positive deflection at F7 on the left side, and there is a negatively charged retina causing negatively charged deflection at F8 on the right side, and so this is an eye movement to the left. Judging by the rate of change and the time course of this undulation, which takes between two and three seconds, these eye movements are slow. These are slow rolling eye movements, which are a normal manifestation of drowsiness. As we move forward, we can see the alpha rhythm begins to drop out. Compare the first half of this page to the second half, and you can see that while there is a reasonably well-developed alpha rhythm in the first half of the page, this is not seen very well in the second half. Another thing that you are starting to see in the second half of the page is some excessive theta activity. This is probably best appreciated in some of the midline electrodes, such as right here. So to review, some of the earliest signs of drowsiness or early sleep include decreased muscle or myogenic artifact, slow rolling horizontal eye movements, loss of the normal alpha rhythm, and excessive theta activity. As you begin to read EEGs, you will see that there will be some fluctuations in the rate of drowsiness, and it is uncommon for people to drop off to full sleep right away. Often, as on this page, you will see some deeper drowsiness which is interspersed with some bursts of diffuse, higher frequency activity seen on the second half of the page. Here, I have moved forward several epochs two or three minutes later into the stage of sleep you can notice that there is much less muscle artifact, suggesting that the patient is in a deeper stage of restfulness. You can also notice that there is no posterior dominant alpha rhythm, and there is much less higher frequency alpha and beta activity than we saw on previous parts of this recording. In addition, I would like to focus your attention to the posterior aspect of the head, where we see several slightly sharply contoured waveforms, which I will point out here. You can see that these waveforms have a sharp contour, and they are upwardly deflected in the posterior channels of each chain. This would suggest that they are either electronegative more anteriorly, 
or they are electropositive posteriorly. We can sort this out further by changing montages. Here, I have switched to an average reference montage. If we look at the same waveform on the right side, we can see that there is a downward deflection at O2 with reference to the average, suggested that this is a waveform with positive polarity maximal in the occipital region. If we think about the elements of these waveforms, we can come up with the name of this particular phenomenon. These have positive polarity, they are maximal in the occipital region, they are sharply contoured transients, and they are occurring during sleep. If we put this together, we can see that these are posts. Posts are normally seen in stage 1 or early sleep, although they can persist into stage 2 sleep as well. Posts are often the first indication that a patient is transitioning from drowsiness to stage 1 sleep. You might have noticed when thinking about the normal wakefulness video that posts have a very similar morphology to lambda waves except that they occur during sleep. Although the exact generator of posts is unknown, patients with prominent lambda waves often have prominent posts. It is useful to think about posts as the sleep state correlate of lambda waves as they have very similar morphology, location, and polarity. I have switched to the EEG of another patient for a better, clearer example of the next common stage 1 sleep transient. Again, we know that this patient is asleep for several reasons, including the absence of prominent myogenic artifact, the absence of any normal, clear, well-modulated posterior dominant rhythm, and the presence of sleep transients. I would focus your attention to the center of this screen. You can see that there are slightly high voltage, sharply contoured waveforms occurring in a run, which are best seen in the central chains, both on the left, on the right, and in the midline. You can see that the quote-unquote phase reversal, or maximum negativity, for these sharply contoured waveforms occurs at C3, Cz, and C4. Again, this confirms that these are sharply contoured waveforms which have negative polarity and are maximal in the central part of the head, also known as the vertex. These waveforms are called vertex sharp waves, and they are often seen in late stage 1 sleep and can persist throughout stage 2 sleep as well. I have switched to a transverse montage to demonstrate that these waveforms are best seen in the center of the head. On this transverse montage, the central chain of electrodes goes from left to right across the center of the head, and you can see that the vertex sharp waves are highest voltage in this region. It is often useful to look at sleep using a transverse montage, as many other sleep transients, as you will see, are maximal in the central head region. I have switched the montage again, this time to an average reference montage, simply to confirm that these waveforms are highest voltage and negatively charged at Cz, C3, and C4, aka the vertex region of the head. To summarize, the two main components of stage 1 sleep are posts and vertex waves. I have returned to our first patient to demonstrate the next sleep transient that is important to recognize. Again, focus your attention to the center of this screen. Here, you can see a relatively high voltage, relatively broadly contoured, long duration waveform that is frontal and central maximal with a relatively diffuse field. This high voltage waveform has two large phases, but these waveforms can often have more phases. Here, we see an initial high voltage negativity followed by a subsequent positivity. In addition, superimposed on this waveform, you can see some high-frequency fast activity. All of the characteristics I described are characteristics of a K-complex. A K-complex is one of the two characteristic findings seen during stage 2 sleep. Here is another example of a more complicated K-complex, which you can see has several phases. The origin of the name of K-complex is the, is the subject of some dispute. However, there is some evidence to suggest that the K might stand for knock. 
K-complexes are generated during arousals and often generated during external stimulation, such as when a technologist knocks on the wall or the door. It is common to see K-complexes preceding an arousal. If you look at this part of the sleep recording, you can see that there is a string of two K-complexes that then precede an arousal, which is indicated by the increased muscle artifact and the loss of sleep transients. Here, I have switched to a transverse montage, which, as I said before, can be a useful way of looking at sleep transients, which are often maximal in the midline. You can see that the K-complex has a slightly different location than the vertex waves, which were maximal at CZ. These K-complexes are slightly more frontal maximal, although they do have a broad field. Here, we can see the other main component of stage 2 sleep. Focusing again on the center of the page, you see a rhythm lasting approximately one to one and a half seconds, consisting of undulating 14 hertz rhythm maximal in the center of the head. This is a sleep spindle. Sleep spindles are the other hallmark of stage two sleep. To summarize the components of spindles, they are usually medium voltage, midline maximal, and have a duration of at least half a second and usually one to one and a half seconds and a frequency of 11 to 15 hertz usually averaging 12 to 14 hertz. This is a routine EEG during sleep in a normal nine-month-old baby. You can see in the center of the page another sleep spindle. In this case the spindle is maximal at C3, CZ, and C4. If we look forward in this child, we can see that at times the spindles are either maximal on one side, as seen here, or on the other side, as seen here. These are what are called asynchronous sleep spindles, which is a normal phenomenon between the ages of 3 months and 18 months. Some degree of asynchronous spindles can also be seen up to 2 years of age. The other thing to notice about these spindles is that they are much longer than sleep spindles in adults. In this case, this spindle lasts almost three seconds. Some EEG learners have used the word asymmetric rather than asynchronous, but the major distinguishing factor is that asymmetric would suggest that the spindles are either exclusively or almost always seen on one side of the head and not on the other. Asynchronous spindles should be seen in approximately equal quantities on both sides of the head, but at any one time, they might be maximal on one side of the head or the other. So to summarize, the two major components of stage 2 sleep are spindles and K-complexes. As we scroll forward, we can start to identify some of these sleep transients coexisting in this stage 2 sleep recording. At the start of the page, we see a K-complex. As we move forward, we see a slightly bluntly contoured vertex wave. Near the end of the page, we see a run of posts. And then we see some spindles superimposed on some delta activity. The posts can occur in rhythmic runs, which sometimes appear sharply contoured. At the end of the page, the vertex wave can appear more sharply contoured than on previous examples. And sometimes the spindles can be less well developed and have a broader field extending into the frontal head regions. I have switched back to the recording of the other patient to show a later stage of sleep. On this recording, you do not see vertex waves, K-complexes, or spindles, but there is no muscle artifact, and this patient is asleep. Here, what you do see are diffuse, that is, they affect the entire head, high voltage, slow frequency delta activity with some superimposed higher frequency alpha and beta activity. You can see that this higher voltage delta activity predominates during this entire epoch. This is what's called slow wave sleep, previously called stage 3 and stage 4 sleep. This is a deeper stage of sleep than the stage 1 or 2 that we saw previously. By definition, slow wave sleep is defined when greater than 20% of the sleep background is predominated by high voltage delta activity. Finally, we have reached the stage of sleep which we will discuss last. Here, in comparison to the slow wave sleep, you can see that the background is much lower voltage and that the main waveforms seen are in the alpha and beta range, perhaps seen best when focusing on the midline. 
In addition, there is very little or almost no muscle artifact. Finally, we see some very complicated eye movements which have both a horizontal and vertical component. We can see that they have a horizontal component because there is an opposite polarity in the right and left temporal region, for example, looking at this particular eye movement. We can see that they have a vertical component because there is a synchronous deflection in the frontal polar region on the left and the right. Therefore, we would call these oblique eye movements. If you look at this set of three eye movements, you can see that they are all in slightly different directions because they all have slightly different polarity in the temporal and frontal regions. You can also see that the initial eye deflection is very quick, lasting only about 100 milliseconds. Therefore, we can conclude that this patient is having rapid, slightly chaotic, oblique eye movements. Taken together with the fact that we know this patient is asleep and that there is very little muscle or movement artifact, we would conclude that this patient is in rapid eye movement sleep or REM sleep. Many EEGers have difficulty distinguishing REM sleep from wakefulness, but I would point out that there is no normal anterior to posterior gradient of the alpha rhythm, there is no muscle, and the eye movements are somewhat complex and therefore are less likely to represent voluntary eye movements. To summarize, we have reviewed the five different stages of normal sleep, including drowsiness, stage one, stage two, slow wave sleep, and REM sleep. Being aware of the normal components of sleep allows us to recognize abnormalities, which will be reviewed in subsequent videos.